Hi Josh here and you're watching 610 Bob's Builds, where I build stuff. In this episode, I will be showing you how I drilled out polyurethane boots so they work with my hydro assist. I am installing a DNS60 into my Jeep, utilizing a hydro assist. What this basically means is a hydraulic ram will assist steering. The ram that I am using utilizes swivel eyes. However, these swivel eyes do not have seals or boots to keep dirt out. This could lead to premature swivel eye failure. And if there's one thing I can't stand is premature swivel eye failure. To prevent this potential issue, I need to add boots to keep dirt away from the swivel eyes. My first thought to fix this is to make a mold and cast a new boot out of silicone. I tried silicone caulk, which failed miserably. Then I spent $60 to try to cast silicone. That kind of worked, but it was way too soft and didn't form correctly. It was then I found tie rod boots on the shelf almost glistening. They came with a bushing kit I got from my Jeep. It was almost perfect, except for the top hole. It was a bit too small. Unfortunately, you can't really drill out polyurethane because it's too soft. But then I remembered a video I saw on a YouTube channel called Applied Science. There, Ben Krasnow used a chiller to cool alcohol down. Then he pumped the alcohol out of the chiller, using it as cutting fluid, cooling down the rubber enough to harden it. I don't have a chiller. What I do have is an ice plug kit and liquid CO2. This kit is used to freeze water inside of a pipe. This plugs up the pipe and allows someone to work on it without draining the whole plumbing system. Using the kits, uh, I don't know what to call it. It's the part that goes into the clamp and fills the clamp with liquid CO2. Anyway, using that thing, I froze the tie rod end boots by spraying them with liquid CO2, utilizing the failed mold as a holder. See, I recycle. I sprayed the boot until it looked cold enough. A thermometer would probably have been helpful here. I quickly grabbed the boot and used a very bit to drill out the top hole. I used a very bit because it effectively removed material but never grabbed the boot out of my hand. I repeated this process until the hole was big enough to ream it out with a 1 inch drill bit. And that's it. The boot works perfectly utilizing free stuff that I had laying around. Boy do I feel stupid spending 60 bucks to try to make my own boot. If you want to do this at home you can easily pick up a liquid CO2 tank at your local welding supply store. You should be able to find a hose to go to the tank instead of buying a freeze plug kit. However, I couldn't find one when I googled it real quick, but I'm sure you can find one. You could probably do this with dry ice, but you would probably need a liquid to conduct the heat away from the boot. However, this is more dangerous. Remember, cold temperatures burn. If you decide to use any of these methods at home, remember to wear gloves and safety glasses. You should probably also wear long sleeves. In fact, you probably shouldn't do this if you're not comfortable handling extremely cold temperature objects. If you haven't seen it, go over to Applied Science and watch the video. In fact, you should just subscribe to his channel. Ben Krasnow does some great work showing off his projects and experiments. Then come back and subscribe to me. I will be releasing more videos on my Dana 60 swap. Oh wait, I almost forgot. No, actually I did forget, hence the shirt change. As you probably have noticed, I changed my setup a little. I'm now shooting in front of a green screen in a room instead of in the garage. This way I don't have to set up and break down my equipment. Let me know what you think. I'm probably going to do this no matter what you think. I'm hoping that this will get me better quality, be able to do videos a little more promptly, let's say. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. Anyway, that's it. Thanks. Bye!